welcome back to Cotto Verdi, my name is Annette and today I'm going to be showing you the different dinner plate dahlias that I've got in my collection. I've only got a few, maybe um, eight or ten, I haven't counted actually, um, <laughs> but I thought it'd be really interesting to show you what they look like. One thing I would say is that it's the very beginning of October and as the season progresses with dahlias they change in colour a little bit and they maybe get a little bit darker but also with the dinner plate dahlias they will get smaller so the first flowers and buds that you get on a dinner plate daily are going to be really huge like 20 to 25 centimeters um, in you know width They're like the size of your head which is amazing but as the season progresses I guess the plants have done their thing and maybe they're getting a bit tired and the flowers will get a little bit smaller but actually that's really useful if you want to cut them and bring them indoors and put them in arrangements it's much easier to use a dinner plate dahlia when it's slightly smaller these really matter Massive heads are actually quite difficult to place in arrangements so I like to put them in individual vases and just put you know one in each vase. The other thing I would say about the dinner plate dahlias is that because the heads are so large, the flower heads are so large, um, they're quite heavy and so if you don't stake them properly they will completely flop over and you'll see that in some of my flowers behind me that they've actually just flopped right over because I didn't stake them high enough um, before I went on holiday and then they just grew like crazy while I was on holiday and I've come back to them all flopping over which is fine because it's just my garden but um, if you've only got one or two you probably want to protect those by staking them properly at the beginning of the season so you don't have to run around um, mid-season which is what I do <laughs> with some more string and tie them in it's up to you anyway but I just wanted to mention that you know if it rains because these flower heads are so big uh, they're going to get very heavy and then they will flop and actually what can happen sometimes if your stems aren't thick enough those very heavy flower heads will actually snap that branch and or that stem of the flower and then you'll lose that whole stem and all the buds that were on it so you know do what you will but um, probably do what I say and not what I do in this case because as I said I didn't state them properly before I went they had some rain and all sorts of wind and a few of them have snapped and drooped but they're looking fabulous what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how they're looking in the bed and then I'm going to lay them out on a table with their names so you can see how one variety compares to another now obviously I don't have every single dinner plate dahlia variety here in my collection but I do have a few and I thought it'd be fun to have a look to see how they compare and maybe it will inspire you or help you choose dahlias for next season or maybe you'd just like to have a look at what I've got so that's what I'm going to do today
So what I've done is arranged all the dinner plate dahlias into sort of an ombre pattern. So it's going from this end where we have Thomas A. Edison and this is a gorgeous deep purple. Let me turn it around so you can see. It almost looks like a water lily version. And then this one here is called Elma E. And it's just a gorgeous sort of deep pink color. And all of my Elma E seem to have this green center, which I think is really pretty and something different. And there's sort of, I don't know whether this is a fascination, in other words, just something that shouldn't have happened, but I think it's quite pretty. And then next to that, we go straight to the Café au lait, which is super popular um, and just a lovely sort of buffy, creamy colour with little pink bits on the petals and it has these lovely curls. This is a very small example. At the beginning of the season, they are much larger than this. And you can see that this one actually has been pollinated and it's quite open, but it's sort of the best of the bunch that I had because it's been raining recently. And then moving on next to that, we have a gorgeous, gorgeous one called Islander. Now this dahlia again is normally much larger than this. Certainly earlier on in the season, the first flowers are really big and fluffy, but it's sort of got this yellow on the inside of the petals here, fading out to pink. And then this one next to it is called Otto's Thrill. Again, this is more open, very much like the Thomas A. Edison, the purple one at the beginning, sort of looks a bit more water lily-like. And then next to that, I've got a very large version of Penhill Watermelon. And Penhill Watermelon is just a bit darker than Islander. So this is Islander and Penhill Watermelon is the one underneath. And you can see that this is a very large example. It's got these really sort of twisty, curly petals, again with tinges of yellow, but the yellow is on the edges, whereas with Islander, the yellow is in the center. Super pretty. And then next to that, I've got Cafe Olay Royal, and this is very much darker. This is sort of the darkest um, dinner plate daily that I've got. Again, at the beginning of the season, these would be much larger flowers, sort of bigger than my hand or the size of my hand, much like this Penhill watermelon here. I'm trying to stand in the shade so you get a better idea of the colours. And then next to this, I've got one of my favourites, which is Mingus Alex. I mean, this is huge and fluffy. I don't know if I can show you how deep it is. It's less flat and more sort of rounded but just the most gorgeous red colour. Again, you can see this one's been pollinated, but because it's rained recently, I wasn't able to get anything less damaged. I mean, it has got some damage to the petals here, but I think you can see how beautiful this dahlia is. Well, that's it for my little tour of my dinner plate dahlias in my collection. I really hope you've enjoyed having a look at them and seeing how one variety compares to another. And if you're at all interested in the other dahlia videos that I've done, I've put some links below, or you could just have a look at my dahlias playlist on my YouTube channel. And do subscribe if you'd like to see future videos about my garden and my dahlias. And uh, yeah, anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Of course there's a plane. It's Monday and I'm filming. Oh, it's a helicopter. <laughs> I'd start again, but there's another plane. Is it the same one? I can't even see it. <sighs> Grief. It's a scent to try me. Another helicopter. And about biplane, I have two, two aircraft in the sky because I'm filming. They've come to join us. <laughs> I couldn't plan it better. Right, let's start again.